This is episode three of scary sounding programming terms that are not. So today <clears throat> is algebraic data types. You'll hear about this a lot um, from people who are into uh, functional programming languages, which is another term we'll talk about soon. Um, in the set of algebraic data types, there's two main ones, uh, product types, which are pretty much just the usual thing people are used to. So something like a struct or a class that has some fields is a, is a product type, or a tuple is a product type. So if we had um, some struct with you know, an integer and a string, different fields, that's a product type. That's simple, and pretty much every language has product types. So when people talk about uh, they like languages that have algebraic data types, or that they like algebraic data types, they're usually talking about some types. And some types have many, many names that people use for them. Uh, variant, for instance, in C++ um, has a support for some types called variants. Uh, tagged unions, which is perhaps the most descriptive uh, name, uh, and discriminated unions. Uh, F-sharp programmers use that terminology. Uh, all of these are talking about the same thing. And again, it's a pretty simple idea, even though there are some crazy sounding names here. So I'll show sort of the most primitive example of a sum type. And this will be uh, the most tagged union looking example. Uh, so suppose we have some uh, game or simulation or, or something like that, where we're gonna have some kind of action that some uh, AI entity can perform, right? And there's uh, three types of actions. So an action that the entity takes can either be to move or to shoot or to wait. Okay. And if they're going to move, they move in some direction. And if they're going to wait, they wait for some number of turns. And if they're going to shoot, they just shoot. Okay, so we don't need any data associated with shoot. But to wait, we need some data with it. We need how many turns we're gonna wait. And to move, we need uh, some data with it, what direction to move in. Okay, so that's the model we're looking for. So here's a way, one way, you can implement that in uh, C or any other language that has um, unions, but doesn't have uh, built-in some types. Uh, so first, let's talk about what is a union. So a union is like a struct or a class, except that the fields all overlap with each other, right? So in memory, um, direction and int overlap. They'll both start at the same point. They'll both start at the beginning of the action union's memory. So you can't store a direction and a number of turns at the same time because they'll overlap. So you can only store a direction or a number of turns. Okay, so remember we defined our action as being uh, either shoot or move or wait. So that or concept is important, right? Our union can only hold a direction or a number of turns, which are the two types of data we might need uh, for action. Okay, so we could store um, our idea of an action in uh, just this union. But the other thing we need to know is which uh, type we actually are. Right? If, we, if we get an action union, we don't know whether we should be accessing the direction, uh, the turns, or neither, right, in the case of wait. So we also need some kind of identifier for which action we're dealing with. So we can do that with uh, an enum. You can do it any way you want, but a nice way is an enum. So <clears throat> an enum action type can be either shoot, move, or wait. And we can put that all together by making a struct, which contains a tag telling us what type of action we are and the action union, which will hold uh, our data. Um, now, the reason we might want to use a union here instead of a struct is if we use a struct, we're going to have enough memory to store a direction and the number of turns, right? And we don't want to waste memory. So we use a union where we only store enough memory to hold a direction or a number of turns, right? So that's less memory, and it more accurately reflects the actual situation, right? An action does not have direction and turns has a direction or turns or nothing. So when we put this all together, <clears throat> we could make a perform action function, 
that takes in an action, right, our struct. And then it can use something like a switch statement to see which action it is. And in the case of shooting, it'll do some code to perform the shooting. Oh, someone asked me to zoom in a little bit. Yes, we can do that. Let me know if that's good. So uh, we check the tag and we, uh, if it's a shoot, then we do the shooting. If it's a move, then we can access the union's direction and use it. And if it's a, a wait, right, we can access the action.turns and use that to wait for some number of turns. Um, so we've kind of built a sum type from first principles here. And what's nice here, as long as we, we remember to check the type, then we always know exactly which part of the union uh, we can access so we don't screw up, right? Because if we accidentally access turns here, uh, we'd be getting bad data because that's not what's actually in there. We'd get something, it just would be wrong. So that's nice, uh, but it's not type safe, right? We have to manually make sure we get the right type and then use it the correct way. And it's also a little bit messy, right? We've got unions and structs, and there's different ways we could organize this, but it, it's a little bit of extra work because the language doesn't have some types uh, built in. So let's look at some other ways we could solve this problem. Uh, so C Sharp, <clears throat> another language that does not have uh, some types built in. Another way you might solve this problem is with uh, object-oriented programming. So you can have an abstract class action with an abstract uh, method execute. And then for each type of action, you make a class that is a subclass of action and they contain the data they need and they have a constructor and they have their own execute method, right? So their execute method will use the direction data and do the move. Shoot action will just shoot and the wait action will use the turns data and wait some number of turns, right? So this works fine and it's type safe, right? And you actually, uh, and you don't need, uh, yeah, it's type safe, so you don't have to make sure you do things properly. You can just have uh, an array full of actions and call execute on them and everything will be fine. So that's pretty nice. Um, there's some downsides to this though, like this is a lot of typing for a simple idea, right? It's even more code than uh, the C++ or C example, but it is type safe, which is nice. Um, and people are used to doing classes like this. Uh, but when you have a sum type uh, built into a language, this can become uh, even simpler. So we're gonna do uh, an F-sharp version. F-sharp supports sum types. They're built into the language. So let's see what this would look like in F-sharp. So first we're gonna need um, our direction type. I'm gonna say that can be north, south, east or west. And so what we've done here is actually a sum type of its own. Um, but in this case, we're just using it like an enum. So that's pretty straightforward. Think of this as an enum, north, south, east, west. And then we can make the actual uh, sum type we're interested in, which is action. Right, so our action can be uh, shoot, move. Mm, don't correct me. Don't correct me, Visual Studio. Or wait. But remember, we need uh, data associated with these things. So uh, shoot, uh, shoot doesn't need anything. Move needs a, a direction. And wait needs a number of turns, which is just an int. Okay, so this is the syntax you can use in F sharp to make a sum type. And you notice what we've done here is basically equivalent to what we did here with all of this mess with unions and structs. Um, but it's type safe. Okay, so let's show an example of how we can use this. So we're going to make a function uh, perform action which will take in an action of type, right? <clears throat> We're using our action type here. So the question is, uh, we have an action, how do we know which one it is and then use it? And so uh, languages that have some types built in, uh, the way you do that usually is with uh, pattern matching. 
So we can say match a width. And we check to see which one it is. Don't correct me, Visual Studio. Okay, shoot, move, or wait. And <clears throat> if it's shoot, we do the shooting. If it's move, we need to get our direction. And if it's wait, we get our number of turns out of it. Let's see, why isn't that happy? Let me check my syntax here. It might just because we're not actually uh, doing anything. Yeah. <clears throat> so this just means it's like the, the, the void type, unit type, don't do anything. Um, so what happens here is uh, this first part checks to see which type of action it is. And then you can extract the particular data out uh, just by naming it. You can give it any name you want. You could call this D. Uh, but either way, you're getting that direction type. And if you hover over this, you'll see the type inference is telling us that's a direction. Here, the type inference is telling us that turns as an int. Right? And again, you use whatever name you want here. You can make it descriptive or short. Um, and it's totally type safe in that you're always going to get the right type out. So you can't make a mistake like you could with the manual implementation in C. And it's very little code, right? It just took four lines to define our discriminated union uh, versus the object-oriented style, which is uh, what about 50 lines, right? With all the classes. And then typical style, each of these classes would be in a different file, right? So it's really, really big compared to when you have uh, some types built in. And then instead of using uh, inheritance and polymorphism to do the different actions, you use a match statement, right? And the other nice thing about the match statement is if you um, forgot and left one out, or say you added a new type of action, um, I don't know, block, right? You'll now get a warning here. Incomplete pattern matches, pattern matches on this expression. Right, so you automatically get a warning if you go through and change an action and you don't update one of your match statements, uh, it'll show up as a warning that you need to handle the new kicks. So you get a lot of safety from it, which is nice. And now our warning goes away. Okay, so that is uh, what people are talking about when they talk about algebraic data types. Um, and you'll hear the, the terms again, some types, variants, tag unions, discriminated unions, and languages that support them uh, innately. It's similar to this. Um, so some other languages that support them are uh, OCaml, Rust, uh, Swift, I believe. Um, and uh, languages that don't, sometimes people make libraries to approximate them. Sometimes those can be useful. Sometimes they can be more trouble than they're worth. Like in C++, there's a STD variant, I think, that people don't always like to actually use. But it is very nice when you have this really short syntax. So any questions about algebraic data types? I'll hang on for a little bit in case there are any questions. So next time, um, <clears throat> I think we'll do abstract syntax trees. And that actually might be tomorrow since uh, kids might be home soon and it'll be too noisy. All right, looks like no questions. So thank you and I'll see you next time.